When using Soul Renee Tray, you need to make sure you're properly protected with gloves, apron, goggles, and your hair up. Okay. Uh, we're adding one milliliter of catalase to Christine's uh, test tubes using a water test. Okay. Uh, we're putting uh, silver nitrate in different concentrations each, into each of the sets of uh, test tubes. So this set has zero. This has 0 0.1 milliliters, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. Go, Julia. So each of these little beakers, we're measuring out 2 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. And we're going to pour this beaker into one of these, which have varying uh, amounts of... Uh, silver nitrate in them and then we're going to measure how high the bubbles go up to record the reaction so that's 12.5 centimeters Our experiment was to see the effects of an inhibitor, which in this case was silver nitrate, on the catalase. Our initial thoughts were that the varying concentration of the silver nitrate would have a varying effect on the catalase. More specifically speaking, as the concentration of silver nitrate went up in 0.1 increments, the reaction, the reaction would be increasingly inhibited with each trial. However, as the data shows, the reaction of catalase and hydrogen peroxide created a significant reaction where the bubbles were measured uh, to 12.6 centimeters. Then, once 0.1 milliliters of silver nitrate was added, the reaction was inhibited and the bubbles only reached 2.46 centimeters. As the silver nitrate concentration was increased by 0.1 milliliters up to 0.4 milliliters, we noticed that the bubbles within the reaction remained around 2.1 centimeters. Therefore, the reaction was initially inhibited but the varying concentrations of silver nitrate did not have a significant effect.